Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Today, I wanted to go over something a little funky with variable names. As you may remember, Corn Shell allows you to define variable names as letters, numbers, and underscores, but it can't begin with a number. So, in this case, we have a variable called color, and we're assigning the value, the string, yellow to it. Now, say, for example, you wanted to create a new variable called new var, and you wanted it to consist of the following. You wanted it to consist of whatever it was inside of color, plus you want to append a lowercase s to the end of it. Well, here's your problem. Corn shell, when it sees the dollar sign, it automatically thinks, okay, I have a variable name coming after this. And variable names in corn shell can be, can have letters, numbers, and underscores. It just can't start with a number. So what corn shell does is it sees these letters here and it looks for something that is not a letter, nor a number, nor an underscore. So in this case, it sees color with an S at the end, and it thinks that's your variable name. Now, as we haven't defined anything for colors, this comes out to be a null string, and therefore, new var ends up having nothing in it, which is not what you wanted. What you wanted was for the word yellow with an S at the end of it to be put into NUVAR. This is how you would print out color. However, if you try to print out color, the variable, the value within the variable, and add an S to it, this is what we would basically do. And as you know, corn shell would see this as one variable name. It wouldn't see this as the variable and do the substitution and then add an S to it. So how do we get around that? How do we let corn shell know that color is our variable that we want to do the substitution on and associate the dollar sign with it and that S is just a letter that we want to put directly after the variable color? Well, you do that with these squiggly braces, and I don't know the exact terminology for them. However, what you're going to want to do is put a dollar sign, an open curly brace, the word color, which is the name of your variable, a closed curly brace, and then an S. And what that tells corn shell is that this dollar sign is going to be associated with this variable name color, and that anything after this open, cur this closed curly brace has nothing to do with the variable name. It's just text. So let's actually run this. And here you go. The first thing we did was, so let's look at what we're going to run, and then we'll look at the output. The first thing we did was we just printed the value within color right here. And once again, these single quotes are perfectly fine. They don't do any escaping if they, if they are inside of double quotes. The second thing we tried to print was we tried to print the variable color with an S at the end, like we did for the assignment statement here. And this is the statement. Let's take a look at the output. So our very first print statement said color is, and it does come out to be yellow. Our second print, print statement said color with an S at the end is, and it comes out to be an empty string. See? 
So it tried to find a variable called colors and substitute whatever was in colors right in here. However, because there was no variable called colors, it had nothing assigned to colors, therefore nothing got put into this right here. And then in our third statement, we said color and the open curly brace and the close curly brace with an S at the end is yellows. And as you can see right here, that it did in fact take the variable color, do the substitution. So this was the substitution right here. This part got substituted. Color had a value of yellow in it, got substituted right here, and then we just printed it an S afterward, which was yellows. So when you want to add text after you do variable substitution, just put the variable name within curly braces.